Okay, number four from the arithmetic pretest is one that students commonly get wrong simply because they've never seen it before. We often don't get time to get through this in a typical semester. So let's just take a look um, at what's going on here. First of all, we'll read the problem, simplify, and I'm sure you remember from your class, simplify means perform the indicated operation. So what is the indicated operation? Uh, what am I supposed to be doing to this particular number here, 64? Well, if you take a look at this, we see that radical. Now, most of you guys are used to reading this as square root, but do you see the little num number nestled here inside the check? That's an indication that this isn't a square root. This little number is known as an index. Index. The index of a root kind of reminds me of a power. In fact, you're going to see that it directly relates to the power here, um, but in the opposite kind of a way. If I say an index here, I'm, I'm saying that there's um, the same number happening inside of 64 three times, um, because my index here is three. Um, so it tells you which power this is an inverse of okay so we can see a three in here so this is the opposite of the third power we're taking the root um, opposite of the third power we call this the cube root cube root because of this little three here you might remember that a, a floating three power is known as a cube and so this is a cube root so let's write that down so if you have a three nestled inside the root, then that makes this a cube root. Okay, so what am I asking you when I'm asking for a cube root? I'm saying what number times itself three times? What number cubed equals whatever you're seeing inside the uh, inside the radical over here. So what number times itself in this case equals 64? Uh, what number times itself three times? Uh, but the problem here is if you have these memorized, you're really, really lucky. So some of us just have these memorized. And so we know right from the start, um, have this list of facts off our head. We know that, you know, um, one cubed, so let's talk about what it means to cube. So let's just imagine, so again, careful. This is not cubing, this is cube rooting. It's doing the opposite of what I'm doing here. But in order to understand this, we have to understand going forwards. Kind of like you have to learn addition before you can learn subtraction. So let's talk about um, what it would mean to take the cube of two going for a random number here so we can play. So imagine I had this problem two cubed. Well, what does it mean? We know that we can write powers out in the expanded form. We can turn that into repeated multiplication. In this case, two cubed would mean two times two times two. See what I'm saying about what number times itself three times? This is the number two multiplying by itself uh, three times. And of course, if we were to do that math, two times two would be four. Multiplying that by another two would be eight. Clearly, um, the cube root of 64 is not 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is not 64. Um, some of you know that the cube root um, of 64 is 4 because you just have it memorized that 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. Now you say, Kate, what if I don't have that memorized? Well, you have two options. Here's your two options. If you're cool like me and you have that memorized, you just know this is 4. Now, again, what if I don't have that memorized? Here are your options. One. Go ahead and memorize them. I have a Quizlet set for you of the first few cubes. You don't really have to know that many first few cubes and their roots. Practice them, memorize them. If this comes up on the test, lucky you. Uh, second thing you can do, though, you can always do a factor tree. 
If you want to know what a big number is made of, we know that we can take a factor tree. So why not? Let's see if using the factor tree method I can get to 64. So this is how I would do it. The first thing I would do is I would start factoring 64 to see what it's made of. So 64, and when we go to do a factor tree, you know, we draw these little uh, V underneath, and I'm asking what times what equals 64. We've learned this before that it doesn't really matter what fact you know. So maybe you know that 8 times 8 equals 64. So put an 8 on each of these branches. But notice, these numbers are not prime. They could keep on getting broken down. As long as they can keep on getting broken down in a factor tree, feel free to break them down. So 8 is the same as 2 times 4. Now 2... 2 is prime. I'll circle that guy. I'm done with that guy. Um, however, 4, 4 is not prime. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going with the color black here. 4 is the same as 2 times 2. And let's do the same thing with this 8. That's 4 times 2. Again, you need to take note of all your prime numbers. So this 2 is prime. This 2 is prime as well. 2 are the only even prime number. You might remember that from class as well. Okay, uh, but my 4 here. is the same as 2 times 2. Okay, so what I just found out when I took the factor tree of 64 is that it's made entirely of 2s. Okay, now the nice thing about this index is this index will tell you how many you have to uh, take out of the same number at a time. Uh, remember, what it means is you have the same number multiplying by itself three times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather my numbers in groups of two. So let's first look. Oh, I just said it wrong, didn't I? Goodness, I'm going to gather my numbers in groups of three. There we go. So what I notice here is that I have three twos. There you go. So what I found was a 2 inside of 64. 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. But then notice I have another group of 3 twos. Okay. I'm pulling them out in groups of 3 because of my index of 3. So I have one group of 2s and another group of 2s. So basically when I took the cube root of 64, I found two 2s or two groups of 2s. That being said, I pulled these numbers apart. How? What was I doing when I did this factor tree? That was division. So if I want to put them back together, I'd better do the opposite multiplication. So I have 2 times 2, which of course is 4. So two different ways. If you are absolutely not sure of this, you don't have this memorized, you can do a factor tree to try it. Now, you might be a little mad at me. You might say, that's, that's kind of confusing, Kate. I want to do one more, one more with a factor tree so that you do not think that it is harder than it is. So let's see. Let's take the cube root. I didn't plan this. This is on the fly, so you guys have to deal with my messy handwriting here. Of... Hmm, nice big number. Hmm, I know. 216. Okay, there we go. We got the cube root of 216, and hopefully you're saying right now, Kate, I do not have this memorized, okay? Too high. Um, if that's the case, then my, the factor tree is going to help you a lot. So let's give it a try. 216, factor tree uh, to see what it's made for. And remember, we're looking for groups of three of the same number. So first, let's just pull the sucker apart. So I don't know any multiplication facts off the top of my head about 216. I mean, two is that's a high number. But I do know that since it's even, it's divisible by 2. I'm just going to go ahead and divide it by 2. I'll put the 2 on one side, and the answer I get on the other side. So 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 1 zero times. And carry the 1. 2 goes into 16 eight times. And if you're amazed at my ability to do what I call site division here, that's what I'm doing right now, go ahead and watch the site division video. I'll lay it down on the page. <clears throat> and you can um, be a division ninja like I am. Okay, 108 also is even, so it must divide by 2. 
2 goes into 10, 5 times perfectly, no remainder, and 2 goes into 8, 4 times perfectly, no remainder. Uh, again, um, I see an even number, but I think I'll start moving a little faster because I happen to know that 54 is equal to 9 times 6. Um, the second you can start pulling out bigger numbers, uh, this whole th process will move faster. 6 is the same as 2 times 3, and 9 is the same as 3 times 3. Now remember when you're doing a factor tree, we're only going to end up using the ends of the branches here. So let me go ahead and circle those primes at the end. We had a 2, another 2. Now don't circle 54. We broke that up. And we found out 54 was just a 3, another 3. That's an ugly circle here. A 2 and a 3. Okay, so remember, we're looking for groups of 3 of the same number because this is a cube root. So look at, look at what I noticed. A 2, a 2, and a 2. Do you see that? Excellent. Oh, that is not the right tool. Here we go. A 2, a 2, and a 2. That's a group of 3 2's, and so that pulls out as a 2. And then we have three threes. One, two, three. Three threes. So that pulls out a three. And then we we'll remember what we said. If we pulled these things apart through division, we're going to put them back together through multiplication. That means that uh, 216 is the same as 6 times 6 times 6. So the cube root of 216 is just 6. Okay. Hope that makes it clearer. Um, again, go ahead and practice the Quizlet set so that if you forget this whole factor tree method, you'll just have those uh, perfect cubes memorized.